What's up, everybody? Thanks for coming today. We appreciate it. <clears throat> UFC 202 takes place Saturday, August 20th at T-Mobile Arena. Nate Diaz versus Conor McGregor. And the co-main event, Anthony Johnson versus Glover Teixeira. Who has the first question? He's on his way. Can you, uh, Danny, can you tell me, I guess, what your feeling is right now? Once again, Conor McGregor is, is not here. For the start of so we're starting without him. Yes, start respecting people's time, man. Yours, theirs, mine, theirs, David Copperfield's, everybody's. <laughs> we have only so much time in this room. Does it concern you at all that this continues to happen? I mean, is, this, is there an issue that needs to be addressed? Listen, we're having a press conference here. If it's over before he gets here, then it's over. Do you have any questions other than Connor being late? Thanks, Dan. Thank hey, you. Uh, if I could, if I could re uh, you know, in the, in the first fight, obviously a big win for you, but Connor did have some success early on on the feet. Uh, when you see this fight playing out, do you feel like you're going to have to get through some early trouble again, or do you feel like you can handle things differently? That's what we're here to find out. Fair enough. And I guess, <laughs> and I'll ask you, Nate. You know, you've been wanting these big fights, these big opportunities, big money. You get them, and then the guy that you're here with isn't, you know, doing the same thing you are, being here on time, showing up for the press conference. I mean, does that upset you that uh, that he's not here? Right now? Nah, I don't care. It's rude. Fair enough. Fair enough. Thanks. And uh, just quickly, if I could, for Anthony, uh, it, you know, it seems like uh, maybe John Jones is getting back sooner rather than later. I know that you're kind of taking your eyes off him and said that maybe that fight might not happen, but. Dana has kind of alluded to some good news. You know, are you starting to think about that fight, or is it Daniel Cormier? What do you think you get with a win here? Um, hopefully I get Daniel. I mean, John got to deal with other, other people besides worry about me or me worrying about him, so I'm not really focused on John. You know, I got that. Hell, before I get to Daniel, I got to get past this beast that's to my left over here. That's a Brazilian killing machine, you know, Glover. So, um... Yeah, that's, I'm just focused on that and not really worried about either one of those guys. Thanks, I'll ask the same thing for Glover, if I could, please. I think most people consider this a number one contender fight, but, it, you know, if you're able to get past Anthony Johnson, would your eyes most be on John Jones or on Daniel Cormier? Well, Daniel Cormier is the champion now, so, um, you know, that's why I ask um, the fight with Anthony Johnson first because uh, he's the number one contender. And, uh, you know, I, I have to beat him so I can, can fight for the title. And uh, after this fight, yeah, we fight for the title. Daniel Cormier, you know, already saying, I, I, uh, I don't know, I didn't hear from him, but I, I heard that Daniel already say that they win this fight to fight for the title. I, I don't know what's going on with, with John Jones, and um, I don't really care either. Nate, it seems like this fight has a boxing match written all over it. Do you, what's your mentality in regard to you know being able to take his best punch and over the course of you know whatever it be, 25 minutes, being able to wear him down with your punches? Uh, I'm a mixed martial artist. Uh, I like do kicking and grappling and everything. So it's a mixed martial arts fight. Uh, I always train hard to be in the best shape I can. In or out of season, so we're gonna have to get in there and see see what happens in the fight, and that's what that's what I'm here for. That's what we're all here for. Obviously, the weight advantage you have is, is something that seemed to play a role in the, in the first fight. How do you try to lean on that again and make sure that you you know repeat what happened in this one? I don't know, but it's not that big of a weight advantage. When he's talking about coming up to welterweight, fighting Robbie Lawler and taking the belts and all this stuff. And all of a sudden, I got 30 pounds on him, and they're making excuses for whatever. Uh, he fought 145 pounds and 155 pounds his career, and I fought 155 pounds in my own career. So it's, um, And I had a couple fights at 170. So uh, I don't know how I was suddenly became this monstrous heavyweight against Conor McGregor just because I won the fight. You had said earlier this week, I think it was the Fox Sports, that uh, you're, you're kind of resigned from the fact now that you won't be facing John Jones most likely in the future. Although that could be changing, if that fight doesn't happen, would that disappoint you? Do, do you want? Do you want that fight? Yeah, I mean, I want it. You know, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm not gonna hold my breath and wait and find out. 
And uh, just for Glover, I don't know if you can see me, I'm, I'm on your right. Uh, Rumble's a guy that he's so dangerous. He has that one punch knockout power. Does that change your strategy at all because there's such a low margin of error in a fight like that? Yeah, of course. I have to uh, be very aware of that, you know, and uh, I know this guy's, uh, you know, this fight is a, a very, it's going to be a very exciting fight, man. You know, it could be a, one of the best fights of the night or the quickest fight of the night, you know. Um, you know, like, you know, I say this before, we don't have to be here and promote fight and talking, you know, shit with each other. We know, we show, we show the way we fight. We come in the middle of the octagon and we throw bombs and, uh, this is the way this fight's going to go down. And, um, and, uh, of course I have to, to be aware of that, the, the power that you have and, um, not get caught when one of those punches, be quicker, be faster and pressure him. And then just for Dana. I know that there's still a lot to hash out with John Jones, but will the winner of this co-main event get a, a title shot? We'll, we'll see after the fight. We'll see how this fight goes, and then we'll, we'll figure that out next. And but, but, but obviously, these two are the two likeliest guys to have it, yeah. So I guess you guys will wait to see what happens with Jones before you decide? Or? Um, uh, no, I wasn't saying. We'll see how the fight goes. And then just the last thing, Dana, the last few weeks, uh, a few groups have come forward trying to unionize fighters. I just wanted to know what the UFC's position was on that. Whatever. I, I don't know anything about it. Question for Anthony Johnson. Uh, Anthony, this is a striker's uh, matchup on paper. Uh, but do you anticipate having a speed advantage in this fight? And if so, how much of a factor do you think that would be in the fight? Um, yeah, I think I have the you know, speed and uh, disadvantage. But uh, other than that, I think the fight is pretty much you know, equal. And Glover's strong, I'm strong. It's, both of us are explosive and very powerful. So we'll, we'll see, you know, with, with a fight like this, when you got two guys who aren't afraid to, to throw down, sometimes speed plays a, you know, key role in this, and sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on who comes in, you know, who, who, make, who, who makes the least amount of mistakes in this fight, in my opinion. That's what's going to be the, the, big, the, big, the big thing with this fight. And question for Glover. Uh, Glover, we're talking a lot about the fight on the feet, but we can't discount the possibility of the ground game. Anthony brings a, a wrestling uh, background. You've got jujitsu. Uh, what, what part of your camp has been spent preparing for the possibility of that ground game and maybe, maybe seeing some grappling from you that we haven't always had to see in the past because you've had so much success with your hands? Well, I'll prepare for everything, man. You know, I'm, um, I know Anthony have uh, some uh, gr great wrestling, you know, and, uh, you know, I have some good wrestling as well. And uh, I see, you know, see how the fight goes. You know, I'm not, I have, I'm, uh, I've been in this, in this sport for a while. So, um, you know, I see where the fight goes. What's open, you know, if he let the uh, open over there, I will try to take him down. And I'm, I'm aware that he will try to take me down too. It depends uh, of the opening, so I'm prepared for everything. So you know, I'm not I'm not saying that I'm gonna stand there and strike with him or or not take him to the ground. You know, this is an MMA fight. That's why it makes the the sport so exciting. And when you fight guys like that, you know, you have to train for everything. Everything. Rest. I have. I bring wrestlers in. I bring uh, kickboxers and uh, you know a lot of jiu-jitsu guys. So I'm ready. And lastly, a question for Nate Diaz. Uh, Nate, you're a very difficult fighter to finish. That's only happened a couple of times. Obviously, Conor McGregor is going to believe he's going to win the fight, but how much of a miscalculation do you think he's making in saying that he's not only going to finish you, but that he's, he's going to do it very early? That's what he said last time. Um, uh, I think he's got a lot of uh, people around him, and he's trying to pump himself up, and... He's either lying to himself or to the to the to the world about his confidence or trying to make himself believe it. But he you know he remembers what happened to him in the last fight, and uh, I think it's a little silly, man. He got he got pictures of me up in his garage with a, him punched me in the face. Like, what the fuck? Who does that? That's like trying to make yourself believe something. That's all. I I just think you know it's um. He's trying to hype his own self up, but when he goes to sleep at night, he remembers what happened the last time. Thanks.
I have a question for Dana White. Just over here, Dana. To the other side. Just over here. Um, during the media scrum that Conor McGregor did, he sort of gave the impression that he won't be defending his title regardless what happens after this fight with Nate. I'm just wondering, where do you stand on that? Regardless what happens on Saturday, will he be defending his featherweight title? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Or giving it up. Okay. And um, Nate, speaking of titles, obviously both the lightweight and the welterweight division has seen a bit of a shake-up. New champions. You've mentioned that you're looking for big fights, but after you beat Con or if you beat Conor McGregor, will you be looking to possibly go for a title shot in one of those divisions and become champion? I think those guys in there will get to work and do a little something for themselves because don't no one even know their names. Uh, they, they need a. Uh, I'm not interested in those fights. I'm interested in big fights, and and uh, maybe those guys should fight each other. Make make uh, they want to make history. They want to fight me and this guy. It's like do something with yourselves first and make some some noise and and create something. Otherwise, I'm just fighting another guy because he's got a belt. I don't think that's a very big deal. Just my final question for Anthony Johnson. Anthony, if you get the rematch with Daniel Cormier, if you do beat Glover, how do you see that rematch going differently to your first fight? Uh, hopefully, when I hit him, he stays down. He doesn't get back up like he did last time. Um. Make sure my wrestling, my grappling is on point, and just, you know, just keep pushing myself to get better and better, and you know, hopefully that time comes. But fuck, sorry. Um, Y'all stop talking about Daniel and John. I gotta fight Glover, man. I'm tired of hearing that name. Hey guys, Ron Kruk with Inside MMA. Uh, question first for Nate Diaz. Nate, do you feel that you exposed Conor McGregor as a better talker than he is? A fighter. Uh, I think I just think I, I beat him, you know, and I thought I could beat him the whole time. And um, I think that he's a good fighter and a, and a good talker. It's whatever, you know. And uh, it's not, somebody's got to make a scene here because nobody else is. I thought I was doing that for years, and uh, they weren't pushing it as hardcore. They're pushing him, but uh, I think that I think that he's a good fighter and. Uh, and a talker, but. Historically, you haven't done a lot of press before your fights. It's no almost... punk ass compliment either. Fuck him. <laughs> you haven't done a lot of press before fights. Uh, it's almost like you guys have reversed roles. You were in the media spotlight. You did shows like Conan O'Brien, Jimmy Kimmel Live. Can you talk about that experience? Yeah, it was cool doing all that stuff. Uh, I, I would have. Uh, it's more fun to do stuff like that after the fights than before the fights, for sure. You know, it's kind of hard to get on stage and joke around with Conan O'Brien or Jimmy Kimmel if you're like really looking to fight somebody in the future. It's not really a funny situation for me, but but uh, after the fight, after the matter, and everything comes out good, it's usually a, probably probably going to be a better time. But um, I think it's I think it's a I think it's a good thing for for uh, the fighters and the sports, and you know they're they're starting it like the sports growing every year, and um, I think there should be a, a lot more fighters up there doing this thing because we're we're the top entertainers in the world. Uh, like I said, we got we got NBA stars and football stars and actors that we grew up on and and, and rappers and stuff. Rock band, they're all the baddest people, entertainers in the world, and they're sitting there watching and talking about us at these fight shows. And it's like, <clears throat> there's no, there, there's no doubt that we're the the top top entertainment in the world. So I think it's good, and I think it, it's gonna keep keep going up from here. And a quick question for Glover. Glover, you mentioned that you've been doing this a long time. You're a veteran of this fight game. As you come into this fight at UFC 202, you're the oldest fighter on the card. Do you, what's your mentality going in, and do you look at this as maybe possibly your final run at a UFC title? Um, I don't know. I don't know. You know, uh, it's all relative. I, I feel I feel great right now. I feel great, uh, you know, training wise, and, um, in, in a gym, you know. I'm t I, t I told people before, I, I felt that great in my fights. Uh, it was like uh, San Peru fight and the Maldonado fight. That's how I feel, uh, you know, I, I feel that great, the way I'm feeling right now, feeling feeling in a very good shape and 
I can't say to you, you know, what's the future hold? Like, you know, I don't know. Uh, like Chuck used to say, you know, the day that I'm going to gym and um, and I feel that I don't have on me anymore, I, don't, I feel that I don't want to train anymore, and I feel I'm getting beat up by uh, sparring partners, and that that's the day I'm probably going to call in and quit, you know, but uh, that doesn't happen yet, you know. Uh, I, I just keep fighting and um, keep that dream alive, man. And final question to Dana White. Dana, if Connor doesn't show up to this press conference, will there be any repercussions? He's showing up. <laughs> He's en route. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> question for Nate over here to your right. <laughs> Nate, to your right. Connor has said uh, in some media that over the last couple of days that you weigh around 200 pounds. Are you able to clear up how much you do weigh? <laughs> Yeah, I'm like. <laughs> 175, 200 pounds, something like that. Uh, you also said that uh, the game is going to change if you win. You told that to Yahoo Sports. What do you mean by that? It's already changing. How so? Can you elaborate on that? <laughs> if people will follow the leader, they know how to do things. Okay, and a uh, question for Connor. How are you, Connor? Um, are you able to uh, clear up why you were a little late to the press conference? Um, I thought it was half one. I was told to have one. Um, <laughs> Vegas traffic's heavy as well this time of year. I don't know. Must, there must be a McGregor show going on because the place is packed out. Are you disappointed it started without you, that you missed the beginning? Um, look, uh, no. <laughs> no. Um, these fucking press conferences, again, I don't know what's... I mean, I've made... These press conferences have help shape what this is, and then also they've almost got me fucking, they have got me kicked off cards before, so, um, look, I'm just happy to be here, I'm ready to fight, that's all I know, cut, cut all the bullshit, I'm here, I'm ready to fight, you know you're going to get a fight when I'm, when I'm here, um, you know it's going to be a show, so, so forget all this other crap and this timekeeping and stuff, you know what I mean, I'm here. Do you agree with that statement coming from him, and do you feel like your reputation is on the line a little bit as well, considering you asked for this one? Um, look, we're confident in what we've been doing here. We're, we've prepared. Um, I'm ready for whatever this man has to bring. Bring his full camp. Let me see his full camp that he was talking shit about, that he was making excuses away, got the head slapped on for most of the fight. Um, let me see that full camp. I can't wait to see it. Um, bring the clinch. Bring your jiu-jitsu. Bring the whole of fucking Stockton. I'm ready for it, for whatever he has to bring. Uh, quick question for Nate. Nate, onto your left. The podium's in the way. Um, you know, with Dana saying that win or lose, McGregor would return to 145 pounds. I'm wondering if you have any reaction to that. I mean, obviously you're planning on winning this fight. But you did make some comments saying that the promotion did Connor a favor by giving him a rematch immediately. If you were to lose to him, now knowing that he would go back to 145, do you have any reaction to that? What a question. Say it again. <clears throat> Nate, basically, Dana has said that Connor will return to 145, win or lose. Do you have any reaction to that, you know, based on some of your previous comments? When They're trying to make an escape route. And I guess, Connor, would you feel any obligation to give him a rematch relatively quickly, you know, just based upon the fact that, that you were able to get one with him right, right away? Um, the way it all panned out, I've got other business to handle after this fight, but make no mistake, it will be a trilogy fight down the line. It won't be straight away, but we will, we will do it three times, 100%. Your whole team. Little crackhead essays. You'll do nothing. You'll do nothing. Shut your fucking mouth, you'll do nothing. You'll do fucking nothing. Not one of you will do nothing. Get the fuck out of here. 
Get the fuck out of here. Fuck you. That's all right. Hey, 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 the Connor. Connor, don't throw those fucking can't Connor. Connor. That's a wrap. Get him out of here. Hey, Dave. Hey, right, right, right here, everybody. Hey, hey. Connor, go. Go. Sorry, guys. See you Saturday. Fighting Alistair Overeem is just going to be a great opportunity for me. He's uh, number three right now. It's very important to beat Alistair Overeem and uh, take his place. The Pitbull, the former UFC heavyweight champion of the world, about a decade ago. It's unheard of for someone to bounce back the way Andre has. I want a so bad fight for the title and I want a so bad to be a champion again. But for me, it's more important right now to beat Overeem. And I can wait for the title. I don't care. I just, I just want to be Toveri. That's it, period. Alistair Overeem. When you talk about decorated mixed martial arts fighters, they don't get much more decorated than this man. Overeem has uh, great kicks, very heavy punches, and, uh, and uh, have to be ready for this. Oh, my goodness! Alistair Overeem by DKO! No doubt I have more hearts than uh, over him, but I have to remember that in the heavyweight division, you know, everything pretty much can end, end by one punch. Oh, he's got it! Andre Olovsky has done it! I hope so. It's going to be a very exciting fight for the fans. Over him, he's going to be very smart and very accurate, and I'm going to be very smart and accurate too. Oh, oh you're Olovsky wrong! He caught him! Oh, back fist! It is it's all it's over! It's over! It's all over! over. That fight's not go going to hold five rounds. I will knock his ass out. Everybody has that misconception. Pro wrestling is fake. All the people in pro wrestling are weak, can't fight. Why can't I? I can try this. I was definitely a bit of an outcast. I didn't really fit in. 
Why are you crying? I love you so much. <laughs> Too much, kiddo. I'm 0-0 and, 0 and I'm, I'm getting this shot in the UFC and it's not right and it's not fair. This is actually real. This is a real story. The athlete gets in the ring himself, you know, and it's self-discovery. It might not work out. It's your career, not their career. Fast, boom, faster, faster. You got to put the effort in. This is their world. I'm just getting started in it. Total domination by Damian Maya. He's got the choke. Oh, oh my. tagged him. Oh, absolutely. Oh, he's out. And it is all over. He's putting on a show tonight. So explosive. This kid is a finisher. Unbelievable. That kid is so talented. Man, that girl is a ferocious young lady. That was Ronda Rousey like. Man, they're firing away. Huge win for Rowdy Beckwons. Wow, these guys are exchanging. Wow, I mean, that is impressive. The onslaught continues. Unbelievable action. There's never been anything like this.